Okay, been asked a few questions. Uh, apparently some people have problems connecting to their Serbo GX and uh, I will step through how it's usually done. And probably the area where people may uh, not be aware of. And also regarding configuring the MultiPlus. Um, I don't have the MK3 and I guess they want more information about uh, how I make my changes without using the MK3. Okay, let's just zoom in on the Serbo GX there. Oops. Okay, that's the wrong one. There we go. When you first get the unit, Probably the simplest way uh, would be just to plug in a Ethernet cable into your router. And from there, you can then go into the menu, which I will show uh, this further on. And there you can then go into the Wi-Fi setting, connect to your Wi-Fi system, enter a, a password for it, Save, it will get saved and it will remember. If you got two or three Wi-Fi's, you can save all, all two or three of them. So, Ethernet cable, once you have that, you can make changes. Once you got the Wi-Fi turned on, then you can do it all through Wi-Fi. The default, of course, when you connect is six zeros. Now, the problem what happens if you don't have Ethernet and you don't have Wi-Fi connection? How else can you get into it? Well, this will be especially true if you're in a, in a remote area and camping and you wanted to access your uh, Subaru GX. At home, you had no problems. You did it like I just mentioned. There is another option. It's a little bit slower, but it works. There is, if you were to go into your Wi-Fi uh, search, where, like for example, on the iPhone, in a search and let us scan, you should come up with a Wi-Fi name that starts with Venus and then a whole bunch of uh, letters after that. Select that. Wi-Fi address, and then you have to enter a password, and the password is found on the label sticker underneath your Serpo GX. Or if you have the box, it should also be on the label on the box, if, I, if my memory serves. That's it. You log, log into that Wi-Fi that starts with Venus, Enter the password that's found on your sticker and you're in. You can do the same changes as uh, you do at home. I had to do that uh, only a couple of times. Yeah, it was interesting because last winter when I was building all this and then tested it in my RV, uh, there was videos on previous uh, uh, publications that I made and I had no Wi-Fi, I had no internet, and I had to actually use the same approach. Connect Venus, enter the password on my iPhone, and I was able to monitor and make any changes. The only thing you have to keep in mind is uh, once your phone's connected to Venus address, um, and you forget about it <laughs> when you go home, you, you don't have Wi-Fi <laughs> unless it's smart enough to auto connect uh, to a right Wi-Fi. So you have to remember to, uh, to leave it and you have to reconnect every time to it if you want to connect to your system in, in a remote area. Okay, I'll just quickly um, use my iPad and record from there. 
how to make the, the various changes and how I configure my file. Okay, I'm gonna launch VRM. I'm gonna to go to my installation, look for deviceless, scroll down, remote V config. I want to upload a file because I want to make a change. Let's say I want 14.4 absorption but at 40 amp charge it's writing system has been configured so I found another way of, of reducing the need for me to make changes, uh, especially for a charge voltage. I just defaulted to 120 volts and then used the Victron Connect to change the charge. Um, I couldn't do that before, a couple of versions back. I don't know if it was a bug or just a feature that was added late, late, recently. When I had the unit set, uh, I think at 40 amps, as a default, I could change anywhere between zero and 40, but it wouldn't make any difference over 40 amps. So I decided, okay, set up for 120. And this way I can change it from zero to 120 using the Vitron Connect. So hopefully this will be something I will no longer need, but we'll have to wait and see. I just did a fresh update uh, to 312 and and I'll verify everything is working. Okay, the next clip is going to be my MacBook Pro Intel version, and I'm going to use the Apple Boot for Windows to Launch. download the file we, we, that we connect. just uploaded using the iPad to verify that it works. Okay. Go. That same information will be also my laptop. I believe it's device list I want to go. And remote we can think. I should just tip it up a little bit here. There we go. And I want to download. Let's see what the settings are. So my, my charge was set differently, so let's verify. And so I believe I wanna open this one, right? to my charger, 14.4, that's what I requested, charge current, 40 amps. I've done this dozens of times, never failed. So, it does work. So now, I'm going to I'm just gonna manually change this now. Normally I, I, I sit at 120, but it doesn't matter. I'll leave it be. <laughs> it works. And all you have to do is just save this config file and copy it over to your iPad or your iPhone. And whatever that settings you have there is what it will upload should you make changes with another config file. So you don't need an MK3. I don't want it. It's a waste of money. 
I can imagine uh, uh, someone who's in the business of installing this uh, on a, you know, regular purpose or, you know, on a regular basis. Yeah, it's a tool they'll need. It's like any other uh, business. If you're in the business of uh, installing Victron uh, equipment, MultiPlus, then the MK3 certainly be quick and easy because it's it's readily available. And you, you probably won't even have the config files. However, a person could create the config files, put it on his phone and upload it once, once the equipment is set up. But for average person, you know, someone who's just having an RV and having solar or someone with a van or doing a van life, why get an MK3 when you can do it? You just need access initially to create these config files for the changes you think you will come across. especially when you change battery banks, capacities, things of that sort. But uh, fortunately, most of these things can be ch changed just using the Victron Connect. It's just uh, some of the settings in MultiPlus you couldn't. But judging from the recent updates, I notice I can do more now than I did a couple years ago. So progress has been made. I'm convinced that uh, this VE config uh, remote will one day not be needed. It'll be all working via Vikram Connect. That's my hope. Anyways, in the meantime, that's the solution I have to resolve my needs. And everybody has different needs. So, so I, you know, so I have comments come back saying, you know, if, you, if your unit is configured properly, then you never have to change it. Uh, unfortunately, that's not realistic. The environment change, setups change, uh, conditions change. There's so many factors that good for two or three months, you may an upgrade about something, and now you want to make a change. Uh, not all batteries can be charged at the same rate. You know, some can only go 30 amps, others can go 50, others can go 100. It depends on your battery bank. <clears throat> and especially if you have two or three, and you, and with, which you switch in, switch out. Uh, uh, which happens when you're boondocking for a long period of time. Okay, I'll stop recording on this. And